Today we're going to jump right in, and our story comes from Matthew 9, and it reads, And some people were carrying to him a paralyzed man lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, child, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the man, Stand up, take your bed, and go home. And so the man stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. If you're joining us for the first time today, we are in a series called The Questions Jesus Asked, where we are looking at some of the questions that Jesus asked throughout the Gospels. As I was looking through this list of 300 and something questions, I kept coming back to the question that Jesus asked in this story that I just read. Some people bring a paralyzed man to Jesus. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. A statement that I am sure was lovely to hear, but words that at the end of the day really meant nothing to the people who needed something. Sure, I bet it was reassuring, but it meant nothing to the friends who brought their friend to try to have him healed. And it definitely meant nothing to the man who was still just lying there on the stretcher, unable to move. Some of the people around them got a little upset that Jesus thought that he could just casually walk around and forgive people's sins. But I believe they missed the part that they were supposed to be upset about. Because anyone in that place could have said what Jesus said and got the exact same results. A man still lying on a stretcher with none of his needs having been met. But Jesus knows that they are upset. And so he asked the question, the question that we're going to focus on today. He says, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk? You see, I think there are times that we as a people as Christians, as a church, we too often stop and settle for the easy answer. We stop at the surface level and we often fall short of offering people real help. There are issues that are just too big to see any way forward. There are people that we know that we should care for, but we prioritize other things instead. There are situations where we know that we should speak up but it's just too uncomfortable. Too often we are willing to settle by saying, it's okay, God has a plan. Or saying, it's okay, I'll pray for you. And although it is done with the best of intentions, we stick to proclaiming the sentiment that your sins are forgiven. We take the easy answer that at the end of the day might have made us feel better, might have even made them feel a little better but was of no actual use to anyone in need. We too easily stop there and never make it to the part where we help people get up and walk again. A couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to sit down with an organization called the ACE Project. Aunt Rose began telling me her story and how 10 years ago this October, her son Corey was taken from her because of gun violence. So the 25th of every month, she would go and stand on the corner of the abandoned lot where he was killed, seeking justice for her son. Justice that ultimately never came. She said that on that day in October, when her son was given a death sentence, that she was given a life sentence. And she said that she felt God saying that it was up to her on how she wanted to serve out her time. So she got up. She bought that property that her son was killed on, and she turned it into a community center for the people who are struggling with loss because of gun violence. And that is how this ACE project was born. 
A stands for act compassionately every day. They have an advocacy group called Voices of Pain. They lead healing retreats for mothers whose kids have been taken from them. They have a program called Making Men where they help young men learn different life skills. When you go behind the house, they have a memory garden of rocks and stones that all have the names of gun violence victims written on them. They made this garden to help memorialize people and to remind families that although the justice system may have forgotten them, their loved one is not forgotten by the community. She said that the last thing that her son had posted on Instagram before he died had a caption on it that said, every mother birthed a child, but my mom birthed the legend. She had tears running down her face as she looked around at all that she had built. And she looked at the pictures of the people that she had helped. And she said, this place was built at the crossroads of a mother's pain and a son's legacy. But my favorite project that they have is called the Academy of Child Entrepreneurs, where they work with 10 to 18 year olds whose families have been affected by gun violence. The kids have the opportunity to sign up and to go through a year long program where they learn about small business owning and entrepreneurship. They have local black owned small business owners come in and lead DIY projects and help the kids learn new skills and understand what it takes to lead a successful business. They have financial literacy classes, marketing classes, and they learn about income, budgeting, and how to grow a business. All throughout the year-long program, the kids are making their own small business plan. And at the end of the year, when they graduate, they have Ace Tank, which mimics Shark Tank. And the Ace Board comes in and they hear their business proposal that they have worked so hard on. And if they pass, they then give the kids seed money to go out and start their small business. Y'all, I got the opportunity to hear the business pitch of their youngest student, Jackson, who is 10, and learn about his business, Jackson's Juices, where he's trying to offer a healthier alternative to sugary juices. And let me tell you, it is awesome to see how much these kids are focused on being successful and how much effort they are putting into their businesses at such a young age. So when Jesus asks us the question, which is easier? Well, Aunt Rose and Uncle Lonnie chose to stand in the middle of their pain. They chose to stand in the middle of violence and everything that they had lost. And they chose to say to the community around them, get up and walk to the people she helps, to the families they're serving, to the people that they are advocating for, she did not stop with the easy answer and decided to do the hard work of helping people walk again. I also think about our friends Stachel and Nani over at the Hope Bus, who you all have heard a lot about over the last year. Stachel saw a need in our community and thought if she could just help provide for people who are hungry and houseless, that maybe she could let them hold on to their hope of living a little longer. So she bought this old school bus. She started driving it around and picking up people who needed food and taking them to local organizations serving free meals. After thinking about it, she said, no, if I make people come to me, then I'm the same as everyone else and there are still going to be gaps in accessibility for people who need food in our city. So she decided to take that bus and instead turned it into a mobile food pantry that allows everyone in the community to have access to food. Even if they didn't have the ability to physically go somewhere, they had someone who cared enough to show up at their front door with meals and someone who was making sure that all of their needs were being met. From there, they acquired a plot of land on East College Street, which once was a tent village. They then took 45 of those old COVID testing booths that CVS used to have outside of their buildings, and they turned them into single person houses for people who needed shelter. They then joined with others in the community to provide access to bathrooms, showers, and two hot meals every day for the people that are staying with them. One person at a time, who needs a meal, 
one person at a time who needs shelter. They are helping give people hope for a better future. Stachel said, hope is a sure confidence that resides within. It does not exist in limbo, nor does it wait for miraculous intervention. Rather, it is the confident expectation that if one works diligently following God's lead, what we are working toward eventually materializes. Hope is the anchor that keeps us grounded, even after multiple failed attempts, and the single driving force that says yes when the world says no. So Jesus asks, which is easier? Well, the hope bus is not stopping with the easy answer. They are showing up for so many people in our community. They are telling people that they are worthy and deserving of hope and dignity. They're stepping up to the plate and telling people one meal and one shelter at a time to get up and to walk. And we are here to help you do that. I also think about this place, MCC. A handful of years ago, when the former pastor was telling us a story in staff meeting of a gay couple who came up to him after our Christmas Eve service and said, we are so excited to have found a church that says they include everyone. Can we get married here? But because of our bylaws at the time, the pastor had to say no. With tears in his eyes, he said that we cannot be a place who claims to be one thing but acts differently. And we must be a place that never has to say no to that question again. That led to many members of the board, elders, and other leaders coming together to formally define our policy on marriage and to clarify that when we say all people are welcome here, we truly mean all people are welcome. So Jesus asked, which is easier? Well, I am forever thankful for those leaders for not settling with the easy answer and instead committing to being a place where we are welcoming people and showing that we are a church that is here to help people walk again. A large part of the reason that I have continued to call this church home for all these years now is because we have always been a church who does not stop at that easy answer. We have always aimed to be a church who shows up for people and cares about people in real ways. That's why just yesterday we had over 75 people show up at the Pride Parade. It's why while that was going on, we had another 15 people in West Louisville fixing a rotting wheelchair ramp and expanding a porch for Juanita White so that she had access to her house and ability to watch her grandkids in her backyard. It's why we do things like Mission Camp that we had last week, where we had 72 people, 52 of those being our elementary aged kids, going out in our com community all day, every day, and helping with places like the Hope Bus, Christian Cares Community, the Clothing Assistance Program, Love the Hungry, and many, many more. Because we want our kids here to learn the importance of not settling for the easy answer and how we are called to show up for people who need a little extra care. It's why here in a week, we will be leaving with our juniors and seniors to build MCC's fifth house in Belize because we want to show that our community's needs are not the only needs in the world. And we cannot settle for the easy answer and we are called to show up for people both near and far. The day that we stop being a church that shows up for people and helping them walk, the day that we start settling for the easy answer is the day that we stop answering the call that Jesus has for us in this scripture. My hope for today is that whatever that thing is for you, that issue that doesn't sit right with you, that person that you know needs some extra support, that thing that has been heavy on your soul, ask yourself, what is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? And then ask yourself again, who as a people are we called to be? And then get up and get to work. Amen.